My soul will prosper in all things. That is the title. And so we're going to 3rd John, the third epistle of John, next door to Jude. 3rd John, verse 2. It says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So I would then go back a little bit and just read from verses one to four, but I want to focus on verse two, on the prosperity of our souls. So to the beloved, it says the elder, greeting to Gaius, the elder. To the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So this is a letter from Paul the Apostle. Third John is the shortest letter in the New Testament. All right, and the Apostle Paul, I'm sorry, sorry, it's John, not Paul. <laughs> it's John that is speaking, all right? So I'm just saying that it's John because it says the third episode of John, all right? And this letter is addressed to a man named Gaius to encourage him to continue in faithfulness. So I'm encouraging you this morning to continue in faithfulness in your walk with God. Continue in what you're doing. So he's saying to John, but to, to Gaius, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So he heard good news about Gaius. May people hear good news about you and rejoice over you in the name of Jesus as children of God. People should be hearing good news about us in our walk with God, in our faithfulness, in our walk with God. People went to him and testified. He said people came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. So people have come to, to testify to John that this is a great man of God. You know, somebody will come and tell a story about you, that this woman, this man is a great man of God. Amen. And so he's declaring his love for Gaius and stating that he has no greater joy than to hear this good news that his children walk in truth. You know, one of the things that really bless me a lot is when I see people being impacted and walking in their calling, walking in their purpose, fulfilling what God has called them to. We're not here to suffocate people. We're not here to, to sit on people's anointing and their blessings. We are here so that they're released. If the tree should hold the branch, there will be no fruits. So we must allow the branch to grow out of the tree. And that is why we are here, that we grow in the word of God and bear fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. That is my prayer, that all of us will bear fruit and people will hear the good news of our faithfulness and our walk in truth with God. Amen. So John is saying that he's so happy to hear those good news, the good reports that uh, he is hearing. And he's saying, my children, to continue diligently in the way of truth. So I encourage you this morning, children of God, continue diligently in the way of truth. These are the last days. We must continue to walk in this way of truth. Let nothing, let nothing distract you in the name of Jesus. Continue to walk in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So. John is here saying, talking about the soul. This is where I want to concentrate on. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So what, what is this human soul that he's praying that the soul will prosper? First of all, he's saying, I wish you good health. And then that your soul will prosper. What is that soul? That soul is the part of you that is not physical. That is your soul. That part of you that is not physical. It is the part that lasts eternally. After the body experiences death, the soul will leave the body. 
So let's go to Genesis 35, 18, and then come back to uh, the epistle of John again. So Genesis 35, 18. And so it was, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. So this is, this is describing the death of Rachel, Jacob's wife. As her soul was departing is where I want you to focus on. The Bible says in verse 18, and so it was, as her soul was departing. So her soul was departing away from her body. So as her soul was departing, she named she called the name of her son. She named her son Ben One, son of my sorrow. So from this, we know that the soul is different from the body, all right? And it continues to live after physical death. So when we all pass away, our soul continues to be alive. It doesn't die. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So as a human being, your soul is right there right now. And I'm going to give you a quote, George MacDonald. He said, you don't have a soul. You, you are a soul. You have a body. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. All right. So your body is not you. Your soul is you. You know, when I was studying this, it was so profound. It went deeper than I thought. Your body is not you. Your soul is you. So your soul is different from your body. Your soul will not die. So, 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 so your, your person is not based on your body. When I see you and I say, oh, that person is a nice person. I'm not saying your body is a nice body. I'm saying you have a good soul. You have a nice soul. He's a kind soul. She's a kind soul. I'm not saying the body is kind. The body is the body. Thank you, Jesus. So the body is different to the soul. And, and John is saying here that I pray that you may prosper in everything, everything that you do. His prayer is like you will prosper in all things and be in health because if you are not in good health, you're not prospering really. So he's praying for our health. And then our soul, just as our soul is prospering, our health will prosper. As your soul is prospering, your health will prosper. And we'll get there. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, may God himself, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you have a spirit, you have a soul, and a body. We are a three-part being. We are a three-part being. Thank you, Jesus. This is according to scripture. I'm not quoting anything from anywhere else. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as Jesus is coming, we need to, to, to our souls to be blameless. We need to be walking in truth. We need to be faithful. We need to be soaked in the word of God. We were created in the very image of God, in the likeness of God. And because God is a spirit, John 4, 24, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So we are also spirits. You know, as I began to dig, I realized that we are deeper. This is deeper than what we think. You are not who you think you are. You are not the body that you are in. Your soul and your spirit matter to Jesus. What you feed your soul matters to Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So when we, when we get born again, see, when we get born again, what that means is that our spirit is recreated, reborn. Your spirit, when you came to Christ, was reborn. We became born again. It is our spirit that is recreated. Even though you, our natural bodies remain the same. So your body is the same. There's no change in the body, but something has changed. It is our spirit that changed. Our spirit was reborn. And so scripture also refers to, to us as spirits. We are first and foremost spirits and we have a soul. You looking at me today, you are a spirit and you have a soul. I want us to meditate on that. And say to yourself, I am a spirit and I have a soul. Forget about the body for a minute now, because the body is external. The soul and the spirit are intertwined because your soul is in your spirit. So the Bible says, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, your soul and your body be kept blameless. I'll read the Amplified for you. It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. That is, separate you from profane and vulgar things. Make you pure and whole and undamaged. The prayer that John is praying is that your, your spirit, your soul, your body will be made pure whole and undamaged, consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete, be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has a purpose for everything. Our spirit is his very image. That's why when we die, we move into our glorified bodies where we're, 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 we're moving on further but the body is not gonna follow us. This body is gonna be left behind where it belongs, but we still have a journey. We have an eternal purpose, an eternal journey. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter four, verse 12, Hebrews 4, 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. I want you to stay there, soul and spirit. The word of God is that powerful to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God will judge the thoughts that is in our hearts, will discern what we're thinking. It's the word of God. Let me read the Amplified of that to you. For the word of God is living and active. It is full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit. And exposing the deepest parts and of both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word of God judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So I want us to know that whatever we think, whatever we say, the word of God will judge it. So our soul is housed within our spirit. So the scripture is teaching us that whilst we are spirits, we have a soul. And our soul is housed within our spirit. But our soul is not the same as our spirit. That's deep. I had to stop many times to be able to understand it. So let me repeat that. We are spirits and we have a soul also. And while our soul may be housed within our spirit, it is not the same as our spirit. So we've got two, two, two entities here. 
So Hebrews 4.12 tells us that the word of God is able to divide our soul from our spirit. So while our soul and our spirit may be joined together, they're not the same thing. They can be divided, all right? Okay, so we want to, I'm, I'm bringing you somewhere, all right? So please stay with me. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6, Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. So whilst you're here now, you're not in heaven now. We're still here physically. Whilst we're here, our spirit is resident in our body. Our soul is resident in our, in our spirit. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8 says, we are confident, I say and willing, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So when we are in the body, we are not with the Lord. We are absent physically. All right? So although our spirit is connected with God, we are in Christ. You understand? So this is why I said this is deep. Okay? Don't get confused. Right now, we are absent. We are not with the Lord although we're present with him in spirit, okay? So, and to be with the Lord in spirit, we must be absent from the body. To be with the Lord in spirit, we must be absent from the body. So when you say somebody has died as a Christian, they did not die. They're absent from their body. They're not dead. Because their the soul and their spirit is still alive as we speak now. Anyone that is born in Christ, who has passed away, has passed on, into the presence of the Lord. They've departed from the earth, but they're not dead. The, the, the soul that dies is in hell. And I'm not the judge of anybody. If we don't repent of our ways, of our sins, and we continue the way we're going with wickedness, with evil, with murdering, with slander, with all sorts of evil, we end up in hell. That's when we die. In fact, that is eternal damnation. It's not even as if they die, but they're dead in terms of the fact that there's no life there. They're going to burn there. That's not our portion in Jesus' name. So in other words, if we're to remain on earth, we must retain our natural body. You understand? If we're to remain on earth, we retain our, our natural body, right? But a time will come when our bodies will be glorified and then we travel from earth into heaven. Praise the Lord. So we have a hope. And that's why we don't mourn as sinners do. God spoke that to me when my father died. After a while, I couldn't get over it. And he said to me, don't mourn as an unbeliever. Because you will see him again. And from that day, I took comfort in that. That he's not dead. He's alive. He's alive. Praise the Lord in Christ Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 15. He says, 1551, he says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. We will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable body must close itself with the imperishable. So this body will just change. It's not that we're dying. We're just changing. And the mortal body with immortality. When the perishable has been closed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death has been swallowed up in victory. So we're not dying. So now that we've got that understanding that man, you, me, we are spirit, we are soul, and we live in a body. So now we're understanding what exactly, what exactly the soul is. Let me read what the dictionary says. The dictionary says that the soul is the seat of intellect. The seat of sentient element in man, that by which he perceives, reflects, feels, 
and desires. When you desire to move from your house to somewhere else, that's coming from your soul. When you're thinking about your children, that's coming from your soul. Whatever you're thinking today, your thoughts are coming from your soul. Your feelings come from your soul. Your reflections, they're coming from your soul. So, so basically, the, the soul is the place that houses our will. When you say, I'm not going to do that, that's a decision you made out of the act of your will. That's coming from your soul. The soul houses our emotions. You know, when we're crying, when you say, I'm depressed, that's coming from the soul. Oh, I'm not feeling great. That's coming from the soul. When you're happy, that's coming from your soul. When you're rejoicing like that, your emotions are high. That's coming from your soul and our intellect. So our soul is the thinking, the reasoning part of us, which we call the mind. All right. When you say, do you mind? And I say, oh, I don't mind. I'm saying as an act of my will, I allow you. That's coming from my soul. I permit you. I don't mind. So the scripture has told us now that there's a difference between the spirit and the soul. So it becomes easier to understand now what Paul is saying, okay? So Paul is saying that I wish that you prosper. I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers, just as your thinking prospers, just as your reasoning prospers. I'm praying for you that you will be in good health. Your mind will be in health even as your reasoning, as your thinking, as your emotions prospers. Write this down. The level or degree to which you prosper and obtain health and healing from God is directly related to the level or degree that your soul, the thinking, the reasoning part of you is prospering. Let me say it again. The level or degree to which we prosper and obtain health and healing of God is directly related to the level and degree that our soul, the thinking, reasoning part of us is prospering. So if your thinking and your reasoning part is not prospering, that means your soul is not prospering. That means you're not in a healthy place. That means you're not receiving healing from God because your soul is not prospering. Your thinking is not prospering. Please bear with me today because this is deep. And I would encourage you to go back and, and, and meditate on it. It's very deep. When I sat on it, I'm thinking, Lord, how am I going to deliver this word? So in other words, if your soul, your thinking, your reasoning, your emotions are not prospering, you are not prospering. You are not in good health. And that's how the, the door is opened for the enemy to attack our minds. Because our mind is our soul. That's the seat of our will. The enemy will come in there because you see, when the soul is not prospering, is when we have all those negative confessions, when we speak all those things. It's never worked. It will never work. It's always in my family. Everybody has cancer in my family. Everybody is always sick. My grandfather had diabetes, you know, so I have it. My children are no good, you know. I mean, I don't know what's going on with them. I don't think this child will ever prosper. You know, I don't, that is coming from the seat of your soul. And because they're on healthy reasoning, on healthy confession, there will be no prosperity. There will be no healing. There will be no deliverance. So the Bible instructs us in Romans 12 too, it states that we must not conform to the pattern of this world. The Bible says in Romans 12 too, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. The pattern of the world is the way the world is thinking. Everything is negative. Everything is depressing. Everything is bad. There's no good news in the papers. There's no good news on TV. Everything is negative. The confession from the news is negative. So the souls of men and women are not prospering. People are depressed. People have mental health challenges. People don't think well of themselves. 
the whole atmosphere is gray. The whole atmosphere is bad because the soul of the world is not prospering. Therefore, there's no healing. There's no health. There's no deliverance. And the emotions are bound. That's why our souls must prosper. The Bible says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, your seat of reasoning, your, your soul. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So when renewal comes, change comes. When you renew your confession, when we renew our confession, when we renew our minds by the word of God, when we begin to confess that which the word says and align ourselves to the word and speak the word, then our souls will begin to prosper. Then our souls will begin to prosper. Some people have a headache only because they're thinking negatively. It's not even necessarily that they're sick, but the headache has come from stress, from negative emotions from crying for ages, which has led to depression, which has led to medication, which has led to bondage, which has led to a cycle of ups and downs, and there's no stability, which has led to affliction of the soul, and now the soul is sick. And the Bible is instructing us that we can't be changed, we can't be transformed, by the renewing of our minds, of our will, renew your mind. Don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world. The way we think is so important. The way you're thinking about your situation, your current situation right now is so important. Whatever is going on in your home, if your thinking is not aligned with the word of God and your confession, it will continue. And you'll say, I'm tired. Well, if you keep saying you're tired, your soul will get tired and weary. If you give up, then there's nothing that's going to happen. Don't give up. Renew your mind by the power of the word. Renewal brings change. Every situation is subject to change. Your current affliction is subject to change. Your children are subject to change. Your job is subject to change. Your pain is subject to change. Your health is subject to change. Your home, the atmosphere is subject to change. Your sisters, your brothers are subject to change. Whatever the current situation is, is subject to change according to scripture. Situations and circumstances can be transformed, can be changed, but only when we think. When what we think about them changes, that's when the change will come. What are you thinking about your current situation? Oh, my husband is bad. There's no change going to come. He will remain bad. Trust me, my children are not good. Well, they, re they will remain not good. But when we begin to think right, my husband may not be where he ought to be, but he will get there. I decree it in Jesus' name. You can wake up in the middle of the night and begin to pray. I know some situations are out of control. But I'm telling you right now, there's nothing that God cannot change. God has already spoken what he wants to see. We need to align ourselves with his word, his will, his way, so that we can see what God has seen, what God has spoken. Do you want to be healed? Speak healing. Continue to speak healing. And you will see healing. That, that, that affliction will change. That pain will go. So if we will renew our minds, the thinking, the reasoning part of us, what God has promised in his word, things will change. Things will change because God's promises are yes and amen. He's already in agreement with, with your outcome. Your expectation will not be cut off. But you have a job to do, renewing your confession, your mind, your thinking. Because, you know, sometimes we say things, but our hearts, our thinking is not in alignment with what we're saying. What we think matters. What you and I are thinking matters. Let's go to Proverbs 23, 7. 
Proverbs 23, verse 7 says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man is thinking in his heart, so is he. So is he means he will be like that in his behavior. I watch people's confessions. And that's why when people come to me and they bring their problems, I want them to see the solution. There is change that will come as soon as we begin to align our reasoning, our minds, our thoughts, our confession with the word and the will of God. Change will come. So it is vital that we renew what we think. What are you thinking today? Where you are. Perhaps God has spoken a word to you. He says you're going to be this and that. And you're looking at your present circumstances. You're thinking oh, it's absolutely impossible. You know when the fishermen were catching fish and they had labored all day and they caught nothing. They went to Jesus and said we've been there all day. We haven't caught anything. But Jesus, his mind was so aligned with the word of God. He said, go back and cast your nets. Go back there. Don't leave that place. Go back and cast your net. Renew your mind. There's fish in the ocean, plenty. Renew your mind and throw your net in and you will bring fish out. There is change that is coming for you right now. God is saying. But we need to align our thinking and renew our thoughts, our minds. The heart of man, the Bible says, is desperately wicked. That's why Jesus said that even a man that is not physically committing adultery, but because the thought is in his heart, he has already committed adultery. It's because of the thoughts of his heart. A man can sleep with a woman without actually holding somebody physically. Because of their thinking. The imagination, the, the physical is the acting out of what they've been thinking. A woman can do the same. And so what are we saying? It's important that the word of God will flush our hearts, wash our hearts, renew our minds, renew our reasoning, renew our thinking, so that we're thinking with a God mind. We're thinking with a word. We're thinking like Jesus would think. And then we'll begin to speak what he says, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. The mouth will speak what the heart is thinking out of the overflow of the heart. So whatever the Bible is saying that whatever God has said, what God is saying that what we think, whatever we think, will have a direct effect on us. So whatever God has spoken will have a direct effect on us if we're thinking on that word. I had to sit down for a moment and begin to think and meditate. Spirit, soul, body. Spirit, soul, body. So my spirit, I'll just show you a little demo because I was thinking. But I, I, I don't have... The tool, I'll just use this little tool to encourage you. So this is a big glass, a big cup. And then I've got this tiny little one. This is a gift, right? And I've got this tiny little one, a gift that one of my lovely sisters gave me for communion, right? This is also a communion cup, but it's smaller. This is your spirit. It's big, it's robust, it's solid. Your soul is here right in there, in that glass. But this soul is the seat of your will. You see that small cup sitting inside the big glass? That is the seat of your will. What you allow here will affect your life directly. So when the enemy comes, he'll just take one little thing and throw it into your mind. And you hear it's beginning to rattle. What you're supposed to do right there is remove it. Remove it straight away. Take it out straight. And then you just don't remove that. You remove what the enemy has placed in there and you replace it with the word of God. Replace it with the word of God straight away. 
So when the enemy is telling you your children are no good, you will go back and confess. I reject that in Jesus' name. I reject that. I cast it out, out, out. The Bible says that my children are for signs and for wonders. My children are for signs and for wonders. My children are for signs and for wonders. The devil will come back again. The children are not for signs and wonders. They're no good. They will amount to nothing. And you're hearing that. You reject it straight away. I reject you, Satan, in Jesus' name. <laughs> My children are for signs and for wonders. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. Get out in Jesus' name. You are resisting the devil. You see, this battle is going on in the seat of your mind, your reasoning, your thinking. And then you begin to reflect on your children, begin to think about their future. They're married and settled, the children of God, then the body of Christ. You begin to visualize what you want to see. No mother wishes evil for their child. No father wishes evil for their child. We all want good things for them. So focus on those good things. Speak those good things over them. I love you regardless. Sometimes just call them. It's just a quick call. I love you. I appreciate you. I'll be thinking, well, maybe in the past you say, I'm sick of you. Now you've changed. And you're sowing seeds that will grow and germinate. And this soul begins to prosper. It begins to prosper. It begins to flourish. This is what Paul is saying that he's praying for. This is my prayer for you too today. That we will prosper. And as your soul is prospering, your body will begin to prosper because your body is the external. So, so your body is this big cup here. It will begin to prosper. You will be in good health. There's no doubt about it. I'm telling you, even if you've been on medication for 10 years, God can change that. You don't need to be addicted to it. You don't need to be controlled by it. You can be healed from it. And I'm not saying stop your medication, but what I'm saying is that what, where do you want to see your health? Where do you want to see yourself? Do you want to see yourself medication free? Or stuck on it for all your years? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if we're to prosper in health and be in good health, <laughs> then we have to really be in good health. We have to walk free and prosper and flourish. And I'm not saying, please take your medication according to what the doctor, I'm saying, take your medications, please. But what I'm saying is that even the doctor himself, as your soul is prospering, the doctor himself will tell you, we don't need that medication anymore. I'm going to temper it down. And then one day they'll say, you know what? You're discharged. That's it. So you must see yourself free. Don't accept it into your soul because that's, that's a binding. That bit of you is like that. It will remain there, sitting down there. And so some part of the body is okay, but we're not actually in perfect health. And John is saying that I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health. God wants us to be in health. What are we eating? What are we drinking? Our soul, our thinking must change. Inside my mind, I'm always thinking, I don't want Coke, I don't want Fanta. In fact, I don't want fizzy drinks because I know they're not good for me. In as much as they taste lovely, I know they're not good for me. So there's a battle then that will go on. I don't like Coke anyway. But whatever your addiction is, because we all have one, it could be chocolates, it could be Coca-Cola, it could be Fanta, it could be some fizzy drink, it could be something. And what the word of God is saying is that I don't want you addicted to these things. They're not good for your health. Your body will not be in a good place. You see, because your body is testament to the, to the goodness of God as well. So Paul is paying, praying for a robust person. Your spirit, your soul, and your body, they're all connected. So the Bible is saying, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's important to understand that what we think is based entirely on what we believe. 
What we're thinking right now is based on what we believe. That's why uh, Peter said, Lord, I believe, but help my own belief. The minute they tell somebody you've got cancer, straight away, they believe it. Straight. They take it. And their soul begins to go down. Then their body is not prospering at all. Whereas when you get that diagnosis, right, I understand. And may God help everybody. And we pray that nobody will suffer from it in Jesus' name. If you have a member of your family suffering, we pray healing over them right now in Jesus' name. But what God is saying is you will go home and begin to use the word of God to speak against that diagnosis that in the name of Jesus, my soul will prosper. I'm, I will prosper. I am in good health. You will begin to dig out healing scriptures. Healing scriptures. Because if, you, if your believing is wrong, then your thinking will be wrong. If I believe that what they said about me, you know, that's why I love wonderful parents who, when the children come home and the teacher says, your son will not amount to anything. I don't think they will even make it to university. Straight away, you could see the parent say, no, 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 no. My son will do well. My daughter will do well. You see the dad looking like, no, that's not for me. That's not for my children. I reject it in Jesus' name. And what God is saying this morning is whatever evil report, whatever negative report you have received, you can negate it and change it by the power of the word of God. By the renewing of your thought and your mind, of my thought and my mind. My mind has to be in alignment with the word of God. And if our thinking is wrong, then instead of the blessings manifesting in our lives, we will have something other than blessing that we desire. What do you desire? Blessing then our thinking has to be right and in alignment with the word of God. Right thinking equals blessings. Wrong thinking equals wrong manifestation. Right thinking equals blessings. Wrong thinking equals wrong manifestation. So Jesus told us in Luke 6, 45, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. What are we storing in our hearts? Our hearts, are, it's a, a, your heart is a storage. My heart is a storage. Amen. We renounce every negative report in Jesus' name. Bless you, my sister. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. Let's check what we've stored up in our hearts. What have we stored up in our hearts? Have we stored up healing scriptures in our hearts? Have we stored up the word of God in our hearts? Whatever you're going through now, you need to go and store up the word of God. Is it the home that is toxic? Go back and store up the word of God and begin to speak it. Is it the children? Is it, the, is it your work? And the evil, doubtful, unbelieving man brings evil things out of the evil, out of the doubt and unbelief stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Out of the abundance, the overflow of our hearts, our mouths will be speaking. Speaking Whatever we've stored up in our hearts is what we're going to speak. And that's why I watch out for words. I'm a watch policewoman. I'm a word police woman. I police every word that I hear because some words are not for me. And so I reject them straight away. I use the rod of the word of God to knock it out. Reject it straight away. Beat it out. Cast it out. Any word that's been spoken over you from when you're a child up until now, that is not of God, we bind it. We forbid it from manifesting in your lives and we cast it out now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We reject it, we cast it out right now in Jesus' name. Whatever has been spoken over you from childhood, rejection, we rebuke it and cast it out in Jesus' name. You are not rejected. You are no longer rejected. So you don't have to feel insecure. A lot of us manifest insecurity because of the past. Words that are being spoken have been spoken and currently is still being spoken over us. And instead of rejecting it, we become insecure. 
Because somebody says you are fat. My, my sister, hold your head up high. Because the person telling you that you are fat has logs in their eyes that they need to remove. They got issues as well. Everybody has one. I have to deal with my own issues. And by the word of God and renewing of my mind, my soul will prosper. My body will prosper. My health will prosper. Your soul will prosper. Your body will prosper. Your health will prosper. You will be in good health even as your soul is prospering. So as your, as your seat of reasoning and your thinking is prospering, your body will begin to prosper. It's just natural. It's just automatic. As you're seeing yourself healed, as you're seeing yourself where you want to see yourself, you will see that you begin to manifest that expectation. And your expectation will not be cut off in Jesus' name. So what you believe in your heart, what you're thinking in your mind is what you will speak out and talk about. And so that's why sometimes when we're talking about things that we ought not to talk about, even in our home, we caution ourselves. Let's stop it now. Let's cut it off. Sometimes it's just abrupt. We start and, you know, we have to be conscious of what we're saying, what we're speaking. And so, so when, you, when, you, when you renew your mind, you will experience what God has promised. When you don't renew your mind by the word of God, you will not experience what God has promised. You may want it, but you will not experience it because the mind is not in alignment. It's not renewed. The thinking is not renewed. We need to, to, to rethink. Whatever we're saying must be positively in the word. Speak health and healing and you will receive health and healing. And I'm not just talking about physical healing. I'm talking about mental healing as well. Do you know how many times we've been under pressure? We could be mentally sick. But because we continue to, 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 to just reject it, to resist the devil, he will flee from us as we're submitted unto God. So if we want to experience the blessing of God in our lives, it's vital for us as Christians that we speak health and healing. We speak provision and prosperity. Speak deliverance and freedom from affliction, from oppression, from depression. Speak, 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 but store up. Store up. If there's no food in the kitchen cupboard, we're not going to eat. Listen, if there's no food there, there's nothing that's going to come out of the kitchen. If there's no storage, we go shopping, don't we? Let's shop the word of God and bring it home and store it in our hearts. So that then we speak from the overflow. In Jesus' name, let's speak against affliction. Let's speak against addiction. Let's speak against oppression. Let's speak against depression and anything else that might come against us. Let's speak against those things. Speak against it. A prospering soul causes everything to prosper. As your soul is prospering, your body will be prospering. Everything that you're doing will prosper. People will wonder, are you on a high? Why are you always smiling? That's why somebody can, can be in slavery and still be singing. And still be singing hymns unto God. Because their soul is prospering. Although their body is being chained. And that is what we mean. Because once you are free in your soul, you will prosper. Your situation will change as the mind is being renewed. But more often than not, we as Christians will focus on the wrong things. Let's admit it. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. We focus on the wrong things. And that's why when, when trials and troubles come, we talk about it a lot. You see, we talk more about the trouble than the victory. We talk more about the pain than the gain. We talk more about the negative than the positive. We focus more on, on the negative of what we're going through, on the wrong things. That's, that's why. And, 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 and when, when this happens, the, the power of the word of God that can transform the trouble into blessing is not being released by speaking faith. The power of the word of God that can transform that trouble and change it 
and bring it into blessing, it's not being released. The more we talk about the bad, 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 and I'm not saying don't share with people, please have somebody that can pray with you. It's a good thing. But what the Bible is saying is don't focus on it all the time. You're going to sleep, you're crying, you're depressed. You wake up, you're crying, you're depressed. You can't even see the, the, the victory. So we're not releasing faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so we don't see manifestation and our blessing is delayed. What are we feeding our souls this morning? When we renew our mind, change will come. Let us renew our minds by the word of God and our souls will begin to prosper. And when the power of God's word is released, things will begin to change. Listen, everything around you is subject to change. Everything around you is subject to change. Subject to change. It doesn't matter whether your forefathers had it. It's not your portion. It's not my portion. With me, everything changes. Everything. If I notice anything that is not good in my generation, I change it. I'm not a spendthrift. In the past, as a young person, I would just be buying and buying this and buying and going shopping like, a, like it's food. And when I get to the shops, I'm on a high, like, whoa. I'm in Brent Cross Shopping Center. It's like food on the table. Like I've got plenty of gato. So just walk into this shop, buy this, buy that, buy that. And I remember my parents saying, I wish you children knew that we work, you know. We don't understand. Whether you're working or not, we just spend the money. But when I came to Christ, the Lord began to change and renew my mind. That's not how to be my daughter. That's not how to be. Don't take your parents for granted. I want you to renew your mind. You don't need that. You don't need this. So when I go to the shops, the Holy Spirit is my partner in shopping. In those early days, I said, Holy Spirit, help me when I go to the shops. Help me not to buy what I don't need. And so I'll get to the shops and I want to pick this. No, you've got it at home. Put it down. And I'll smile. <laughs> like a little child. Like, <laughs> okay. I'll put it down. And I'm going to the next aisle now. And I've seen something again. I've forgotten that I've got it at home, actually. And the police reason say, you don't need that either. And then what I need now comes. So you can take that. But then I want to take four of it instead of just one or two of it. He said, no, you just need one of it. Don't take four. Take one. You see, when you allow the Holy Spirit to be your guide, honestly, it's a wonderful, beautiful walk. It's wonderful. The Holy Spirit, my senior partner, he's amazing. He's my shopping partner, my business partner, my partner in every way. You will not fail. Your home will not break in the name of Jesus. Everything that God has promised you, it will come to pass in Jesus' name as your soul begins to prosper through the word of God. Change will come. So allow your soul to prosper. Allow your mind to change. Allow it to prosper. So how do we allow it to prosper? I'll do that quickly. How do we allow our souls to prosper? How do we allow our thinking to change? How now? We need this practical aspect. And so the answer is in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not conform any longer. You don't have to take photos and put them on Instagram any longer. You don't have to buy clothes to show off any longer. You don't have to buy 40 shoes to put in your wardrobe any longer. You don't have to show off with anything any longer. You can just be yourself because Christ loves you just the way you are. You don't have to compare yourself to anybody any longer. No more conformity. We don't have to even look at the material. We are content because godliness with contentment is great gain. We are content in who we are in Christ. We are beautiful like our Father is beautiful. We, we, he will supply all 
our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. When we have Jesus, we have everything. We have everything. So we are no longer conforming. Our minds are renewed. We are transformed by the renewing of our minds. Hallelujah. James chapter 121, it says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save. That word save means prosper. Receive the engrafted word which is able to prosper your souls. Can you see? Prosperity of the soul comes from the engrafted word of God which is able to prosper. Prosper, prosperity of my soul. So I want you to really use this whole week to start thinking about your soul. Is my soul prospering? Is my seat of thinking prospering? What am I thinking? Be, be intentional now. Be intentional. What am I thinking about myself? What am I thinking about my health? What am I thinking about my situation? What am I thinking about my actions? What am I thinking in my thoughts towards this other person? What am I thinking? Even towards myself. Or some people are negative. They don't love themselves. Have you forgiven yourself? Forgive yourself for past mistakes. Stop thinking about that mistake. Stop thinking that you're an error. Stop thinking like you don't matter. Those are negative thinking. Stop thinking like that. Stop thinking like your problem has no solution. Stop thinking like you can never be healed or delivered. Stop thinking like you've got this problem, this sickness, and it's for life. Stop thinking like that. Stop thinking that your situation is bigger than you. Think the word of God. Renew your mind. The word of God, the engrafted word of God. Lay up aside the filthiness. Lay aside the naughtiness of this life. But receive with meekness, with humility, the engrafted word, which is able, able to save and prosper your souls. Hallelujah. So how do we assure that our soul prospers? Begin to study the word of God. Begin to study. Don't just read it, study it. There's a difference between reading. I've been reading this, this verse 2 of John. The third epistle of John. I've read this word. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I know it all by heart, but I didn't study it. There's a difference between study and reading. Study means you're going to take your time to understand. You're going to allow the word to engraft itself in you. It will sit in your heart. You're going to store it in your heart. And it will begin to renew your thinking, your mind. Number two, ask the Lord for wisdom to understand his word. This morning, I had to ask Jesus. I said, Jesus, I don't know how I'm going to deliver the words, but I need you to give me utterance. I need you to speak through me. Please help me to, to speak your word because it's so deep. Pastors don't know everything, you know, because nobody is God. You're not God. Nobody is God. No pastor is God. Don't treat them like gods. Because that's worshiping an idol. I don't know everything. I'm learning like we all are. Praise the Lord. Thirdly, ask him to reveal truth, the truth of the word to you. Ask him to reveal the truth. Ask him to give you the nuggets. The, say, Lord, give me the revelation in this scripture that I'm reading. Give me the truth. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in this word. As I'm reading, I don't understand it, Lord. Open my eyes to see your revelation, your truth in it. And help me to let it be engrafted in my heart. And honestly, you will see change. People will see you and say, wow, you look different. Yeah, because my soul is different. It's been renewed daily. And so it's reflecting on my body, on my countenance, on my look, on my joy. Wow. Hallelujah. So when, when all these things happen, you'll begin to see things as you never saw them before. So everything, everything that we're going through now is temporary. It's temporary. It's temporary. Hallelujah. So little by little, we will see changes in our finances, we will see changes in our bodies, we will see changes in our businesses. You know, it's when somebody renews their mind that they start dieting or they start going for exercises, they change their minds, that they will stop sitting for hours. They will stop eating this and that. They decide to change 
renew their minds and do something. Let's continue to thank the Lord for the words. Let's give him praise. Your business, your marriage, your children, everything will change. Everything will change. Don't give up now. Just renew your heart by the word in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that you're blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you're listening to the sound of my voice online, wherever you are in the world, I pray that the Lord will bless you this morning. Your situation will not change unless your mind changes. And the only thing that can change our minds is the word of God, really. So I want to encourage people. If you're out there, you don't have a Bible, you can go and get one. If you don't have a Bible, you can download the audio Bible online. You can go to gateway.com, biblegateway.com and download the Bible. There's audio Bible everywhere. You can listen to the word of God even whilst you're in the kitchen. You can just keep listening, keep listening, keep reading, keep studying, but don't just listen alone. If you catch a word, go and study it. Go and study it, sit and meditate, you know, regurgitate and meditate and stay there. And you will see that things will begin to change in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Even debts will be paid off. Sickness will go. Infirmity will go in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And so if you'd like to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, will you please pray after me? He will bring that change that is so needed in your life. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you today and I say, Jesus, I repent of all my sins. I ask you to forgive me all my sins. Forgive me for wrong thinking. Forgive me for wrong thoughts, thoughts that have polluted my mind, where light is not even there. It's just a glimmer of light. There's not much, but I want your light. I want your word. I want you to be my king. I want you to be my Lord and my savior. And from today, Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you. I give my mind to you. I give my will to you. I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart. Come and stay. Come and rule. Come and reign. And bring your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I invite you into my heart. Come and teach me the word of God. From today, I repent of my sins. And thank you for forgiving me. I let go. I even forgive myself right now. God wants you to forgive yourself. As you're listening to me, God is saying, I want you to forgive yourself. You've beaten yourself down too much. Say, Lord, I forgive myself as I give my heart to you today. And thank you for accepting me in your beloved. From today, I am a changed man. I'm a changed woman in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will continue to be with you in Jesus' name. If you need us for any form of support, prayer, support, whatever it is, our email address is churchofnewdestiny at gmail.com. Churchofnewdestiny at gmail.com. May the Lord continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.